Summary of Hedda Gabler by Henrik Ibsen Hedda, the beautiful daughter of General Gabler, was recently married to Jorgen Tesman, an academic who is having trouble making ends meet because of his wife's high-class ways. When the play starts, the two have just come back from a long vacation, during which Jorgen mostly worked in archives and libraries. He did, however, find time to get Hedda pregnant, which is embarrassing for her. Hedda also thinks that her new life with Tesman is boring and boring as hell. The play takes place in September, so the next morning after the couple gets back to town, Jorgen's childhood guardian, Miss Julianne Tesman, or Aunt Joel, comes to see them. She is very fond of her nephew. In the Tesman's large, nice-looking living room, they talk about a lot of things, including Jorgen's belief that he will soon get a job as a university professor, which is a respected and financially safe job. Aunt Joel also says that Jorgen's other aunt, Rina, is still very sick and that Jorgen's old friend and foe, Ijlert Lovborg, is back in town. A few years ago, Lovborg went on a drinking spree of bad behavior and lost his social standing. Now, Lovborg has written a new book that is getting a lot of praise. Hedda comes into the living room at this point. She says she can't get along with Bert, the housekeeper, because Hedda thinks Bert threw her old hat on a chair. Jorgen is shocked. The hat doesn't belong to Bert, but to his aunt, and it's brand new. Miss Tesman feels hurt and gets ready to leave. Before she does, though, Jorgen makes things better by implying that Hedda is pregnant, which makes Hedda upset and Aunt Joel very happy. Soon after Aunt Joel leaves, Mrs. Thea Elsted comes. She was Hedda's classmate in school and Tesman's first love. She has come to find Ijlert Lovborg because she is worried that he will go back to using drugs now that he is back in the city and surrounded by offers. Hedda asks her husband to write a warm, friendly letter to Lovborg to call him over so they can keep an eye on him. Hedda talks to Thea and finds out that she has come to town without her husband's permission and has been Lovborg's helpmate and inspiration. Judge Brack, who helped Mr. Tesman set up his accounts, then pays a visit to the Tesmans. Brack tells Mr. Tesman that he said he would come to his bachelor party that night. Brack also has some bad news, Tesman's appointment to a chair, which he was counting on, could be challenged by a Jlert Lovborg. Tesman is upset because this news could make his already tough financial situation even worse. After Brack leaves, Jorgen tells his wife that she will have to spend less time with friends if she wants to save money. Hedda says in a scary way that at least she has her father's guns to keep her busy. Judge Brack pays Hedda another call later that afternoon, while Tesman is at his aunt's house. As he walks up from the yard, she shoots a loaded gun at him to scare him. When they finally sit down in the living room, Hedda tells Brack about the hat. She says she knew the whole time that the hat she made fun of belonged to Aunt Jo and not Bert. Hedda also tells Brack how unhappy her marriage is and how boring it is. Brack, on the other hand, makes it sound like he wants to be more than just a close friend in the Tesman family. Hedda, on the other hand, makes it clear that she would never have an affair outside of her marriage. Tesman comes back to the house, and soon after, Lovborg shows up. Lovborg says that in addition to his new book, he has also written a draft about how society will change in the future. He has put everything he is into this work, and he thinks of it as his own kid. Lovborg also tells Tesman that he won't be in competition with him for the position, which makes Tesman very happy. Lovborg turns down Judge Brack's offer to go to his bachelor party. He also says no to the boozy punch that is offered to him. Tesman and Judge Brack drink, smoke, and talk in the inner room, while Borg and Hedda sit in the drawing room and pretend to look at a picture book. In fact, they talk about the past in hushed tones, and we learn that when they were young, they had a close relationship that Hedda abruptly ended when it looked like it might become sexual. At the time, Hedda said she would shoot Borg, but she didn't. Lborg says Hedda is afraid of gossip and is a coward. Hedda thinks the same as him. Mrs. Elsted comes in and sits down with Hedda and Lovborg in the living room. Lovborg talks about how beautiful and brave Thea is, which makes Hedda jealous. Hedda tells Lborg that the other men will think less of him if he doesn't drink, but Lborg sticks to his beliefs. 
Hedda then says that Mrs. Elvsted came to the Tessman's house earlier that morning, desperate and afraid that Laborg would go back to drinking. Lovborg's heart is hurt by the fact that Mrs. Elvsted clearly doesn't trust her partner. As a result, he gives a serious toast and then drinks two glasses of boozy punch. When Tesman and Judge Brack get ready to go to the bachelor party, Lvborg says he's going with them, even though Thea asks him not to. He says he will be back at 10 that night. Mrs. Elvsted can't sleep at the Tesman's house, but Hedda has a good night's sleep. At 10, neither Ijlertlvborg nor Tesman has come back from the party. Hedda tells Mrs. Elvsted to go to her bedroom and get some rest. In the meantime, Tesman goes back home. Hedda sees him sneaking in and asks him about his night. Tesman admits that he was jealous of Lborg's book. He also has a sad story to tell. Lborg got very drunk, and while he was being walked home, he lost his precious, priceless work. Tesman found it in the trash after he fell behind the other guys. Tesman says he has to give it back to Lborg right away, but he gets a letter telling him that his Aunt Rena is dying before he can. Tesman runs to her right away, leaving Hedda in charge of Lborg's work. Judge Brack comes in right after Tesman leaves. He also has some news for Hedda. After the party ended and everyone went their different ways, Lborg went to the salon of Mademoiselle Diana, who runs a brothel. Lborg also said that Mademoiselle Diana or one of her whores had stolen from him. He got into a fight about it, and when the cops came, he hit one of them and tore his shirt. Lborg then had to go to the police station, which was another thing that made him look bad. The judge tells Hedda that she should stop letting people in from Lborg from now on. He leaves. After that, Hedda hears a fight in the hall. Even though Bird is trying his best, Lborg becomes confused and excited. Mrs. Elvsted also comes in through Hedda's room. Lborg tells a lie when he says that he tore his text into a thousand pieces and threw them all into the sea. Mrs. Elvsted screams that Lborg's action makes her feel like he killed a small child. She goes out. Lborg tells Hedda that his life is bleak and admits that he couldn't tell Mrs. Elvsted the truth about the text, which is that he lost it. He also says that he wants to end his life. Hedda doesn't argue with him, she just asks that he do it well. She tells him to leave and never come back, but before he leaves, she gives him one of her father's guns as a memory to help him kill himself in a beautiful way. Lvorg goes out. Once he's gone, Hedda takes his work off her shelves and puts it in her stove's fire. Aunt Jill comes to the Tesman's house that night to tell Hedda that Aunt Rena has died. Soon after, Tesman comes in, upset about both the death of his beloved aunt and Lvorg's shame. He says that he needs to give him back his work. But when Aunt Jill leaves, Hedda admits that she threw away the copy. To calm her husband's anger, she says she did it because she loves him and didn't want him to be overshadowed by someone with a better mind. When Tesman hears this news, he is torn between fear and happiness. Mrs. Elvsted enters. She has heard that Lborg was hurt in some way. Soon after, Judge Brack comes in and says that Lborg is in the hospital, where he was killed by a bullet to the breast. Everyone is shocked and worried when Hedda talks about how brave and beautiful his death was. Tesman is also filled with guilt because Lovborg's work, which would have made the author's name last forever, is now gone. Mrs. Elvsted says that's not really true because she has the notes that Lovborg used to tell her how to write the text. Tesman and Mrs. Elvsted decide on the spot to work together to rebuild Lovborg's work. Judge Brack tells Hedda that Lvorg's death may not have been a suicide, he was shot at Mademoiselle Diana's house while raving about his work. He also wasn't shot in the breast, as Brack had said before. Instead, he was shot in the stomach. Hedda is horrified by the thought that everything she touches seems to get small and silly. Then, Brack says that Hedda will be in trouble when people find out that Lvorg shot himself with her gun. Brack says, though, that no one needs to know that the gun belonged to Hedda as long as he keeps quiet. Hedda knows right away that she is in the hands of the horny Judge Brack, which is something she can't stand. She also can't stand the idea of her husband always being away with Mrs. Elsted to work on the book, leaving her alone with Brack. 
Hedda goes into the inner room, plays a crazy tune on the piano, and then uses her last gun to shoot herself in the head. Judge Brack says, people don't do things like that, and everyone in the room is shocked. About the author. Henrik Ibsen was born into a rich and highly respected family. His father, Nud, was a merchant who did well early in life, but when Henrik was seven, he lost a lot of money. Because of this, Nud became bitter and started to drink a lot. He took out his problems on his kids and on his wife, Marichen Altenberg, who stayed loving and selfless through this hard time. Many of Ibsen's roles would later be based on his mother and father. Henrik had to stop going to school when he was 15 because his father had gone bankrupt. He then went to Grimsted and started working as a pharmacist student. He also started writing plays. Ibsen decided to go to college in Christiania, which is now Oslo, but he did not pass the tests to get in. At this point, Ibsen had already convinced himself that going to college would not help him write great plays, so he devoted himself completely to his art as a writer. He had a lot of trouble at first with this job, and he and his wife, Susanna Thorison, were very poor. Ibsen's small income as a writer, director, and producer at the Detnorsk Theater in Bergen was enough to keep their family going. Ibsen grew more and more unhappy with life in Norway as his years of being an unknown artist wore on. So, in 1864, he left his wife and their five-year-old son, Sigurd, who later became the Prime Minister of Norway. He went south, first to Sorrento, Italy, and then to Dresden, Germany. Not until 1891 did he go back to Norway. Ibsen came into his own as an artist during this time he spent away from home. During this time, he wrote his famous and successful visionary verse plays Brand, 1865, and Pier Gint, 1867. A little more than a decade later, he had created and polished the realist, bourgeois play. This is shown by the stream of masterpieces he wrote between 1879 and 1886, such as A Doll's House, 1879, Ghosts, 1881, and The Wild Duck, 1884, which some people think is his best work. During this time, Ibsen became the most popular writer of his time. His name was known all over the world, and he became a common name. He was praised for his well-thought-out stories and in-depth character studies, but he was also criticized for being too honest about the bad things in modern life. Ibsen died in Oslo in 1906 after having several strokes. He had the most successful theater career since Shakespeare's. He is often called the father of modern drama and has influenced artists from Arthur Miller to James Joyce. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.